Cool. We start off with bad news for Manchester City fans. Rodri out for the season with an ACL tear that he picked up during that 2-2 draw against Arsenal. Uh, it, of course, dominates the headlines uh, in England. For more on this, let's welcome in, shall we? Mario Malkia joins us. Uh, let's start with you, Nadem and Nua. Nadem, it's interesting at the start of the season, you had Arsenal as favourites to win the title. Does this injury now to Rodri solidify them as the ones to take the title away from City? Um, not necessarily. Obviously, there's a bit of nuance in that. And I, you are right in calling me out for saying that I thought Arsenal were going to win the league at the start of the season. But in recent weeks, they've shown some solidity, but I still feel there's missing something in terms of attack. But for Rodri being missing, you know, this is a huge blow for Man City. He's been their most important player, you could argue, for the last couple of seasons. So much so that, you know, he's in contention and will probably win the Ballon d'Or. So, yes, losing someone of that sort of ability is massive. You know, he's one of the reasons why Calvin Phillips didn't fit in. One of the reasons why other players haven't really had the opportunity. He's been pivotal. He's been the best in his position, in my opinion, for the last year, 18 months. I mean, not least of all, look at Spain, where he's played the tournament in the Euros in the summer. So, yes, I think this is a big boost for the likes of Arsenal, the likes of Liverpool. For Man City, I think they'll obviously try and make do without him. But I think when you look at the way that he plays and his importance to that side, he's not really replaceable. You just mm. have to do things a bit differently. And who knows whether that differently will provide them with the opportunity to be as successful as they have been in recent years. As we saw last season, obviously you had Haaland out for a bit, you had Kevin De Bruyne out for a bit. You can juggle things around, try and make it work. As Nadam said, it's very difficult to find a plan B, isn't it, with Rodri out? Yeah, because they just don't have anybody of a similar vein to replace him. And, and Nadam's, I think, right, that they're going to have to go about it a different way. You know, the same way that previously they, they played without a centre forward before mm -hmm. Haaland came. Uh, and if there's a man that's capable of doing that, it's, it's Pep Guardiola. But it is not going to be easy. And, and quite frankly, I think you've got to look at Kevin De Bruyne as well and think about, he's missed a lot of games over the last couple of seasons and, he's, and he's miss, he was missing at the weekend. Uh, so this is, this is not an easy fix. Yeah. Absolutely not an easy fix. And to win the Premier League title, You've, you've, you've got to be at it for nine months. And when you're losing your best player in Rodri, because right now, no question, OK, maybe you might argue Haaland, but Rodri, um, that's a huge, huge blow. Does this make Arsenal favourites? Um, we need to see a different version of Arsenal than the one that we saw this past weekend and the weekend against Spurs. And if we indeed see some of the same toughness, but also productivity in the attacking half, then we can have that conversation. I still think Manchester City are the favorites to win this league. However, they have to get past the, what I think is a mental block in saying, well, and it's a conversation that perhaps we help uh, build and, and, and we empower that Manchester City are, are apparently incapable of winning without Rodri. Because of his importance to this team, there is sort of this kind of, well, they never lose when Rodri is on the field. And so therefore, look, it's, it, if there was one player that they cannot do without, it's Rodri. Well, if you hang on to that rhetoric, if, if you hang on to that message, then we might as well pack up and go home now because he's not going to be available the rest of the season. But we haven't plucked that from the sky. You know, the statistics no, back that no, up, don't they? No, I, 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 I didn't say that we have just made the numbers up. No, no, but you were suggesting that we help fuel this conversation. No, well, but, I think... But the facts are there that they struggle without him in comparison to well, when he's on the pitch. As it would be the case when you take your best player off the field. That, that's going to have an impact. Mm. Uh, that's, that goes without saying. My point is that if Manchester City are going to be successful the remainder of the season, because there's still a whole lot of season to go, you have to get past that rhetoric. You have to get past that sort of conversation and you have to adapt to what you have now in front of you. And what you have now in front of you is still a long season to go and you have enough players to where there, you can change the formation, you can adapt, you can, you can play with two holding midfielders. You, there are certain things that you can do to try to address this. Now, it's not going to be a one-for-one -one substitution here because there is no Rodri to come in, right? But you are Pep Guardiola. You are considered to be among the best managers in the world, and you still have a deep enough roster to try to address the issue. Manchester City 
I think we'll struggle early on, but in the end, we'll find answers and, in my opinion, are still the favourites to win this whole thing. The bookies have reacted, by the way, to this news that Rodri is out for the season and for the first time we've seen that Arsenal and Manchester City cannot be separated. According to them, they are both favourites now to win the Premier League. And it's interesting we mentioned Nadam's predictions uh, ahead at the start of the season. If you take a look at Mario's predictions, talk about kiss of death. Who's going to win? Manchester City. Who's the player of the year? Rodri. Oh, uh, no. Thanks, Mario. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Hey, that's just how you look at football, guys. I mean, look, everybody's got his own eyes and own predictions. I said City. I felt the feeling because you know, Arsenal let me down so many times. And I felt like, guys, when are you going to push it right over the line? And I felt like City, this season, they still had it. But I was just, you know, like when we talk about the game and what I saw yesterday, it was like, you know, I... I I felt like I saw a different Arsenal and not the Arsenal that we all like and we're not the Arsenal we are used to. But one thing, I saw discipline and mm. I saw a little bit more character. And that's the thing that we always talk about when Arsenal comes. So does it change your mind now that Rodri's out, Mario, with regards to who are favourites? I can't I can say yes yeah, straight away. Why? Because I think, you know, like you guys already talked into it. City's got a, a big squad. Probably one of the, arguably one of the best squads. Sometimes you look at a bench and you're like, Listen, for you to sit on the bench, sometimes some of the players will sit on and go like, if I come on, I got to do a big change. While sometimes when you come in the team and you're like, no, I should play. But with City, it's kind of different. He is out. The only, the only thing, what I say, and always in football teams, the spine of the teams are very, very important. So without the Rodri, we talked about De Bruyne. Uh, Haaland was also a key figure. But those are all in the spine. And the spine of the team is very, very tricky because that is where the, most of the time the dictators are. And the dictators that set people down, you know, put the team in the right position. When the coach is not talking, they are talking. Rotary, when they talk as, as a motivational sort of kind of thing in, in the dressing room or in the team, he's the kind of guy that's not quiet. He will open his mouth. So not... Having a voice that you're missing like him there will be a big change. Mm. But with a squad like that, you should be capable to, to handle it. Mario, you mentioned that kind of change we've seen from <laughs> Arsenal. Jurgen Klinsmann brought it up yesterday and he felt that they're too close to the edge. That we've seen disciplinary problems. Obviously, we saw yesterday Trossard get sent off. We saw Rice sent off as well a, a couple of weeks ago. Do you feel they've turned too much from a side that play pretty attractive football that are fun to watch into this team that are going to really go for you? No, I don't. I don't look, look. Every team needs character, right? And um, if you look at Arteta, he was was kind of the because I think you should look at the coach, and that's how the teams normally are set out. He, he was a guy with, you know, he, he played great football, great technique, but he also had a bit of a character. And it's also a little bit what I always call the Latin fire. You understand? I'm sure Ellie can talk about that. The Latin fire, what they have, is something that I don't think anybody can qualify themselves like having it. It's just that side, they have that. And when it comes up, you understand, it brings a character to, to the way they play. And I think some of the Arsenal players are now implementing that. And sometimes... It might not always be great because I think, you know, what happened, of course, when they got the red card. But there are games. You're going to need it, guys. You don't always need the sweet guys on the pitch. Sometimes the sweet guys need to turn into bad boys too. Nadem, is this the missing piece of the puzzle or is it the piece that's going to let them down? Um, for Arsenal, um, I think, to be honest, for these last three games, because I've watched them against Spurs, I've watched them against Atalanta, I've watched them against a City... They do have that sort of defensive mindset in there. But the thing that feels like it's missing to me is Martin Odegaard. I think he's somebody who can be good defensively for them, but a lot of creativity runs through him. And I think in this last week, they have been lacking that as such. And I think the guys are right. And then I think it was Steven that mentioned it. Like, the balance is a little bit off now for me currently. The defence is great. The mentality, that, as we saw yesterday, in terms of, you know, being organised, being compact, staying patient, somebody stepping forward to muffle in and then back and forth and back and forth. You know that's there, but... At what cost? I think at times it's probably a step too far back. But again, with Odegaard coming back in, in in a few weeks, hopefully for them, I think it does change. And I think that solidity is key because for years, you know, myself, other people, we'd be having discussions about how soft it felt that Arsenal were. You know, they were just young, they wanted to play nice football. And now this is almost the antithesis of that because here they are, this solid side. They're playing with a back five with 
partying rice and Havertz through the center. Like these are big, physical, dominating mm -hmm. players on that pitch for Arsenal. And for them to be able to go to City to not be bullied, because City obviously have the size as well, for them to be good at set pieces, for them to be as well drilled as they are, it feels like it could be the missing piece. But I still think some of the creative creativity needs to stay because, say, the second half yesterday when they obviously suffered defensively, I think if things were going a bit better for them, I think they still would have had maybe one or two more opportunities on the counter-attack. But unfortunately, yesterday for them, it just wasn't there. What do you think, Stevie? You absolutely have to have that side of you. Right. 100%. And, and the manager just has to have a word and making sure that the stupid mistake that Declan Rice made and Trossard made is cut out. If, they, if, if he can just get it in the brains that we cannot afford to do this, otherwise we will not win the Premier League, then I'm OK with it. But you how much does he You need to up? be able to win a fight as well as play good football. But, like, for example, the way they started the game, Havertz on Rodri. Is, is that too much? Is, no. is that risking...? No, I don't, I don't think and so. And so, in order for Arsenal to win games right now, they need to rely on that strength to win games, which is what they did. I mean, again, at the weekend, it wasn't Saka that scored, it wasn't Martinelli or Havertz. Mm -hmm. Again, it's Gabriel yes. and it's Calafiori, who I'm not quite sure actually meant to shoot, let's be frank. But that desire and that fight and that grit is going to get them points until they get either Odegaard back or the ones they have available firing on all cylinders. So, yes, absolutely you have to have that. If, when you hear the messaging and the rhetoric and the press conferences and Mikel Arteta and you watch Arsenal play in the manner in which they did against Manchester City, there isn't a whole lot of difference between what's going on right now at Arsenal and what was going on with Mourinho's Real Madrid playing against Guardiola's Barcelona in that there was a realization, if we play straight up, if we, if we try to match up against, uh, in that case, Real Madrid against that version of Barcelona, I don't think we're going to win that way. And so what do we need to do? We need to start winning the game in the press conference. We need to start winning the game through the media, off the field, and then bring some of that on the field. And now we're playing in the fringes of legality, which I have no issue whatsoever. This is the way that you think you can win matches, then go ahead and do so. My concern is that you do it at the expense of your creative size, that you do it at the expense of who you are as a player. While I understand that Kai Havertz was may, perhaps may have been sending a message, it's not in his nature to be that sort of player. It's certainly is not in the nature of a guy like Bukayo Saka. It's not in the nature of the attacking players. And so, yes, bring that toughness. Yes, play in the fringes of legality. Yes, make it uncomfortable for Manchester City. Get in their faces. But don't sacrifice what makes you a good player. Don't sacrifice what makes you an, an outstanding talent in the attack. And don't forget that in the end, you're going to have to go score goals in order to go win games. And you have, in my opinion anyways, I, I may be wrong here, I may be in the minority, I think that Arsenal can play straight up against Manchester City, that they have enough talent to do that, and when they play 10 times, look, 60-40, 50-50. I think that can be the case. But that's, that's my belief, and that would be my belief if they bring that toughness with them as well, right. which is what I think you can find yeah. the balance yeah. between that toughness and the creativity, and you can play Manchester City straight up. I, I, I want to move it on a little bit from that because I want to talk about the second goal that Arsenal scored, Mario, and I'm intrigued. We've got three defenders on. You need to have a player that attacks the ball, and it should mm. not be the player that's marking a player. So now that space is all free. It's like, what is it, almost two metres, one metre and a half? between him and, and the defensive line, it's very difficult for Walker. You can be the best defender in the world, but he, he is going to get a step on you. So now he moves away, he checks him forward, and he checks him back, and then he kind of almost loses him because he took him on because I think before that corner, I think Doku was standing with him or somebody else was standing with him, but it was not a, gra a great matchup. So now he goes on him because he's more experienced. And then he gets the run up and he knows where the ball is going to be delivered. He knows exactly that they have to block the goalkeeper. So Martinelli did a great job for them to block him. And then I think, you know, they had enough bodies around it to give him the freedom to go and jump. And it's not something new. The, what the, what's happening right now is not only that it's happening this season. No, guys, mm. we go years back, you understand? Even with all of us, when we were playing, blocking goalkeepers is something that's been in the game for a long time. But you just have to be smart about it. When it's happening, 
make sure you position yourself right. And I don't think they were positioning themselves right to give Gabriel that much freedom. Nathan, what's interesting is that there was the warning shot, wasn't there? Ten minutes before that, we saw exactly the same play play out and Gabriel headed it over. Are you surprised as a result of what we saw earlier in the game that there wasn't a conversation, there wasn't more protection over Edison? They didn't think that they would do it again. Possibly, possibly. Obviously, being in the game itself, there are times where maybe you can't sort of have those bigger conversations because there are things going on. But I think, to give, in my opinion, to give Arsenal credit for that set piece, the one that they scored from, is the fact that they come on to Edison so late. You know, no many people would expect Kyle Walker to win the header. And when managers and sometimes managers and coaches put players like that in a sort of mismatch, it's not to win the header, it's to disrupt their timing. And that's what I think Kyle Walker gets wrong. Because, yes, maybe Gabriel will be able to jump over him. But if he knows how Gabriel attacks those set pieces, you probably know Gabriel's likely going to be leaning towards the back post. Maybe stand on his back shoulder for the whole time. So Gabriel's thinking, well, he must know where I'm going to go. And then I, this is something I learned from one of my old coaches, and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. He said, the moment that ball's about to come in, that's when you really stick your shoulder into somebody because then they're stunned. Yeah, they can't move you. anymore or they can't yeah. move to the place that they need to. That's what you have to do. But if you give someone that's that aggressive time and space, like we saw it the week before with Romero, when Gabriel got away from him and scored ahead of there as well, if your job is to disrupt someone, you disrupt someone. Otherwise, you face the consequences that City faced on Sunday, unfortunately. He's, he's too tight. Kyle Walker's too Kyle tight. Walker's too tight. Yeah. Because it, it, all it took was one little, one little drop of the shoulder and he's taking the bait. Going on. Well, they thought they had because Doku was, the, yes. was on Gabriel's so side. The, the, the change so was then changed it and put Walker. But as I said, Walker has got too tight. If it just takes one drop of his shoulder, you're, you're out of the game. Right. You're too tight. Yeah. And as I said, it's not about winning the header. It's about manhandling mm -hmm. the, the, the attacker yeah. or whoever it may be <laughs> yeah. just enough to put him off head on it in the back of the net. Yeah. That, that's it. That's it, Mario. Yeah, Just get a shoulder in, just do something to put him off. You, you, Nathan mentioned it already before, but what I always said, you understand, when, I, like, when, you, when you have a corner or a free kick against you, the best advice you can get for any defender will tell you that it was beyond, like, I, for example, I had a day, he tell, told me, he said, if you don't touch the ball, he, you have to guarantee that he doesn't touch it. I don't care how you're going to do it, you're right. going to find a way. He said, the ball does not get to him. And sometimes I'm telling you, oh, my God, I held on to them. Okay, these days you cannot do that anymore. But <laughs> one of the key things, I, like, I'll give an example. If you play against Ronaldo, he's one of the best jumpers, right? When he jumps up, it's very difficult to mark him. What do you do? I gave him a push. You know what he said to me? Mario, why are you always touching me? I said, my friend, <laughs> this is how you're not going to score. <laughs> this is what football is all about. And don't let him get in your head. Push the guy. So that he right. goes one step back, the, the kick comes, the fly comes, now you both attack the ball. None of you is going to touch it. Go a couple of things. A couple of things. <laughs> Let's not underestimate the quality of the service because all of this that we're talking about is, is meaningless unless you have quality of service and the consistency of the quality of service. And the other thing that I would say, if you're Manchester City and you're planning the matchups during the week, all right, we're about to play Arsenal. Arsenal are really good in attacking set pieces. Okay, wh what are our matchups? We know what our starting 11 is going to be. We assume that we know and have a pretty good idea as to what the starting 11 is going to be for Arsenal. We know the matchups. How do you think, how do you think that Doku and Gabriel is a good matchup? How, how, how when, you're, when you're picturing how the game is going to play out, you come up with that matchup and say, yep, that's the one. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, one more thing. I, I just wanted to ask you, Steve, because I didn't see you yesterday, and I'm intrigued from a coach's point of view. Given what took place in the second half, so we saw, obviously, everyone around the 18-yard box, it kept going to Ruben Diaz Did or Ko Did Kovacic yeah. or yeah. Yeah. Akanji. But why are you not making a switch to make it that your ball-playing players are on the ball in that situation to try and make something happen, and it's not your centre-backs who are there? What's, what's the thinking behind that process? Well, I, I would suggest that not only did the players get frustrated, but he got frustrated as well. Right. So when you get frustrated, you don't think clearly. He's probably, he's probably seen Diaz and Akanji getting the ball in those positions a thousand times against other teams. And you would have thought that that would have been the thing to do. How about you pull 
Phil Foden now. Yes. Because, yes, there's not a lot of room, but if there's any room appears, you need somebody on the ball in order to deliver it. The other thing that I couldn't understand was why Grealish and Silva, when they collected the ball, for the last 20 minutes in particular, whenever they got the ball, they were on the corner of the penalty box. Why were they not standing? They should have had the chalk of the line on the back Just of the book. Just to expand things a bit. Just to... Well, because if the, yeah. defender doesn't, if the defender doesn't come out, then you're able to whip a ball into a dangerous area. Because you're never going to be able to pick MD out. But, but then, if you do that and the defender does come out, then there's a, there's a hole inside him. Which means that somebody else in a red jersey has to come out and fill the hole. Which means there's another hole, which is... Another, so, it, it, I was dumbfounded why the two of them stood right at the top of the corner of the box, because mm. there was nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, uh, Naden, we did see them eventually, of course, make the breakthrough, and of course it was John Stones. Who else? Uh, that was uh, <laughs> going to get the equaliser. How were you when that ball hit the back of the net? Well, City pushed, they pushed. And I suppose in some ways it's, an, it's a good thing for City to see the fact that they had the belief, they kept going, and the makeshift striker in John Stones scored the, scored the uh, equaliser as well. So, yeah, I was very happy, Dan. Very, very I happy. bet you were. I bet you were. I bet you Gabriel wasn't too happy. Not only did he see the ball, of course, go in the back of the net, he then had said ball thrown at his head, Mario. I'm wondering how you would have reacted if Harlan had done that to you. But then he goes and do this because then there must have been something going on. And Haaland, come on, the size that Haaland is, he does not need to play that game. You, you, uh -huh. you, you're, too, you're too big. You, you have everything going for you. Come on now. You don't want to meet Haaland. He's not the guy that I will say, like, hey, when you meet him in an alley and you're going to be like, hey, no, you don't have to worry. This guy might do something to you. No, you're going to look at him and say, OK, I take it easy on him. But if he does things like this, I'm never going to be scared of him. Come on now. Uh, he's going to avoid sanctions, Stevie. Right decision? Aye, absolutely. <laughs> it's fantastic. He's got to be throwing balls at people. <laughs> oh, shit. Naughty. Sure. What's an example? Is that for the children? Oh, think of the children. Absolutely Stevie. brilliant. What a lot of nonsense. <laughs> Storming a teacup. Oh, no. Arsenal fans yeah, are angry. They're I like, it was oh, Trossard, Trossard gets sent off for kicking the ball away. Uh, you don't get sent off. Away you go. <laughs> <laughs> really so, in. Stevie, you did some of that too? You know, you did those things too, Stevie? You want to tell me, I, like, draw the ball at somebody? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the best one. Semi-final FA Cup. Liverpool, Nottingham Forest. Brian Law scores an own goal. And John, <laughs> John Olges runs up to him and pats him on the head. And then runs away. It was oh. fantastic. It's not nice, is it? They're oh, tough, though. Nice. They'll grow up. Nadem, come they on. Grow, come on, professional footballers. <laughs> the kids, no. the kids the Nadem. Think of the children. <laughs> Listen, I loved it. I absolutely love it. And Harlan, he shows this sort of, like, immature, childish side of him when it comes down to football in moments. But I tell you what, though, for all the games that have been played between him and those two centre-backs, I bet there's been some talking, not least of all Gabriel. Gabriel loves it as well. It's just that you don't really see it as much. So, yeah, Harlan doing that, I, I personally find it quite funny. And in reality, it's anyone that's sort of outraged, if he, even if it's Gabriel, well, the solution is don't let City score. You win the game, you say whatever you want, but when those people have the moments, they can do stuff like that. And um, to mention something from me, so when I was in MLS, I was having a to-do with Ibrahimovic in this game, and in the end, he ended up scoring the winner. And there's a picture of my face here, and I'm devastated. And just to the side of me here... He's laughing in my face, <laughs> laughing in my face. And tell you what, there's nothing I can do because ultimately he scored the winner. You can so yeah, yeah. This, this happens, this is football. Hey, but where's he and where's you now? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Take that. Take exactly. That. You don't want to go on hot ones. Mm -hmm. uh,